You do it. I can tell when you're doing it. Doing what? Start, once you start recording. <laughs> I changed a different. Hey, let's talk about this new studio you got rolling. What do you um, think? You've got a lot of amazing stuff there. And I saw recently. Who's that? I'm going to guess Kenny Rogers. As? The gambler? Yes. <laughs> Velvet painting. Kenny Rogers is the gambler. On a train bound for nowhere. There you go, man. It's the greatest. You got to love it. You got to love it. <laughs> oh, we should do the episode in three. Sorry. Miss Q. Went a little early. Offsides. Wow. That's, that's teamwork there, buddy. That's, yeah. That's all. Do, do you know you got an axe about to fall in your head? Chop. <laughs> hey, congrats. I saw that you were, uh, you made Sensei. I don't know what any of that means, wow. but it That's looked awesome. like a big deal. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah. It's a big deal to me. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. So, Good. so now can you levitate and shit or? <laughs> yeah. <No>? Yes. <laughs> nice. Do yes. it right now. Levitate for me. Hold on. Hmm. Oh! Okay. That's yeah. cool. No, it's um, awesome, man. I appreciate it. Wish you could have been there. It would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been fun. I didn't get an invitation, but whatever. Well, it was a long drive too, you know. <laughs> a little bit. Gene, yeah. this is the first episode of 2022. Of the, of the new year. The new year. Um, I would first of all like to just take all the pressure off 2022. 2022, listen to me for a second. This is a little letter from me to you. I don't expect you to be anything. I don't expect you to be better. I don't expect you to be worse. I just expect you to be 365 days in length, and then we'll move on. <laughs> so please, don't feel like you have to prove anything, and don't feel like we expect anything. You're just numbers on a damn calendar. That's all you are. Ooh, I kind of got mean at the end. I didn't mean to get mean. <laughs> Don't pick a fight with 2022. Isn't it true, though? Like, why do we act like you get a new calendar or something flips and suddenly it's like, finally, I can I make things understand. better? I don't understand <laughs> it. I, I, I had 15 days to wait before I could get better. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But we do it. And, and, I mean, maybe it, it ties to some ancient thing in us, or maybe it's because we taxes are due. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine aren't due until October, so whatever. Or maybe it's that sense of, of time <laughs> passing, and we're just like, oh, shit, I better really do something now. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. I've thought about that a lot. Maybe it's the holidays, and the, it's sort of like you stack several holidays you know, between November and December, and it's like... We kind of, we kind of, you know, slow down a little bit the end of November into December, and then people disappear the end of December, and then we pick it back up. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but it doesn't make sense. You nailed something right there. It's almost like we give ourselves this time off at the end of the year. Yeah. You know, merry, happy, everything, whatever mm -hmm. you celebrate. I think everybody takes at least a week off at the end of the year because if, as if not a planet. Should. As a planet, we've agreed yeah. for the yeah. most part. I'm sure there are people who haven't, and and please let us know. But I I, th I think for the most part, we've agreed, okay, this is the end of the calendar year. We're right. all on this schedule so that we can you know coordinate. So let's move on. But I think because of that, we feel like if you're an entrepreneur, you feel like, oh, it's getting quiet. I have opportunities to do the big things. Right. And then you get mad at yourself the second day of the break because you haven't worked. <laughs> right i mean i know well, we kind of talked about this previously but it's, stuff. yeah so i'm curious because I, I, first of all this will be the newsletter this week and i did a, a fair amount of research on business resolutions like what are the what are the top yeah. new year's business resolutions and i could only come up with 34 so <laughs> we're not going to get through all of them That's but before lot. we dive into that i'm curious gene do you make personal New Year's resolutions? No. You don't. 
No. Tell me why. I hope I'm not turning your episode on its side. Um, I don't okay. believe in them. Okay. I don't believe in them. Um, because uh, it's like we were saying, like your your body, the universe, it, it doesn't know time, right? It just it's just every day is another day. So what I like to do, and we do it, we just did it yesterday for uh, one of the businesses was, and we use a year. We use, you know, of course we use the year as sort of like a, hey, we're going to check in on this, you know, next January or December or before the holidays or whatever. But we look at things like from, from a business, we go, what are the things that can level us up? And so I, I try to do that for myself. What are the things that can level me up as a human or as a, you know, as a dad or as a husband or, you know, whatever. As a what are, exactly. What are those things that can make me better? And then I look at, what are the things I can do to help me make new habits to support those things? That's how I look at it. Um, I don't, I'm so glad I you brought this up because I made a list of things that you could do to be better. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to get to that. It's nothing. I, it's oh, just a problem. I thought there were 40, 47 things. <laughs> there probably are. But that's the, that's the key for me. And I, I, fi- I found early on that if I focus on – worrying about not doing the things that are bad, then all I do is sort of cycle and think about all these things that, that was bad that I was doing, right? Or that I perceived that, as negative. So that's an interesting that take. Sense? That's an interesting take that resolutions have to be about not doing something bad. Well, let, let's, let's take something that could be universally, I guess, thought of as bad, like drinking. Like, let's say you drink a lot and you want to not you drink. bite your tongue, sir. <laughs> No, I'm with you. I'm with you. If, if I'm going to drink, on... drink less in the new year. Well, that's the thing. If, if all you think of is, oh, God, I can't drink, you know, or, or, or if I drink this much, it's going to be bad. Or this is negative that I drink this much. Right. You're still it's all negative. Right. Instead of instead of like, OK, so what's something I can do that's sort of like anti drinking? Like maybe it's running. Then you could focus on I'm going to run a mile a day. Right. And that's a positive thing as opposed to just focusing on why am I, why do I keep doing this bad thing? So why can't, why can't I'm going to run a mile a day be a resolution? It's just about changing something, right? It does. So, so, but this is interesting. I I think you're onto something that most people look at a resolution as removing a negative versus adding a positive. And And you can make a resolution anytime you want. Yeah. Right. You could do it in April. You know, and I don't care if you want to use January 1st as like this kickoff day or whatever. Um, I I would just say be careful of that sort of New Year's resolution vibe, because I think nine times out of 10, you're going to quit that thing by the end of January. I I think that's that's true. And I think when you make it a specific thing, you make it a specific thing and you go, I mean, let's take drinking, right? I mean, this was a big Mm -hmm. one for a lot of people in 2020. That's why 2021, a lot of people slowed down or or found other things to do. But let's just, <laughs> let's just like, go with that. Yeah. Or, or I'm going to lose weight or, or whatever. whatever. Like anything that, that is a personal belief that you need to change from something you've been doing that's a coping mechanism mm-hmm. or whatever, or you feel that the external world's looking at you a certain way, right. gene, right. or whatever. <laughs> but um, – the second that somebody asks you if you want to go out for a beer and you're like, ah, oh, I said I wasn't going to drink, but I want to see my friend. And you have one beer and you're like, ah, oh, well, I, I guess I didn't uh-huh. do it. Yep. Right. Or, or you have, you know, a second helping of something or you skip that day at the gym or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Like, you know, this, you run a gym. Yep. Memberships go up right at the end of the year, beginning of the year, because everybody's yep. like, this is the year I get in shape. That's right. right. I think I think the challenge for me personally, and I would say probably for a lot of humans, is that we make it this one thing. Mm-hmm. It's real easy to fail quickly and give up on because it's something that we were using to manage something else. And we never address what is that That's challenge? Great. What is that thing that right. had me drinking more? And it could be addiction, right? I mean, it could be well, yeah. a heavy thing yeah. or it could be, I'm just numbing myself because I don't want to deal with X. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I think yeah. that becomes a big part. I also think accountability is a huge part. And I think 
we, we as people, as humans, we hide from accountability, especially as we're older, maybe even more established professionals. We don't feel like, because we're so used to providing accountability to like our employees or children or whatever, that we don't, that a lot of times maybe we don't feel like we need it. Like, oh, I got this. Um, I think an accountability can come directly from a coach or a therapist or a mentor or whatever. I think yeah. that's huge because what you're getting at is, not the thing. The thing isn't drinking. The thing is, why are you drinking? Yeah. The right? thing is, what am and, I avoiding? Or yeah. Or what am I celebrating every day for two hours? Right. Is the way right. I like to look at it. And you might not be able to see it, right? But somebody else, like I've had conversations with you before, where you're like, "Well, you know, you know this thing," and I'm like, "I, you know, I never thought of that because you can right. see it and I can't because I'm in it or I'm causing it." Yeah. 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 Coach is very helpful, or a therapist, or whatever, whatever you need. So to me, and this is when these things changed for me, right? Like this idea of the New Year's resolution, because I was on that train of, oh, hey, you know, this year yep. I'm going to I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. And then, yep. you know, in February, March, I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so like last year for me, the resolution was I'm going to be a better runner, mm -hmm. right? It, and it wasn't. I'm going to drink less, but by being a better runner, I had to drink less. It right. wasn't, I'm going to, I mean, I did set a goal, right. And I accomplished the goal, but to your point, I made it well, public that I had yeah. the goal yeah, and I documented it every time and all of those types of things. Um, and I think this, this really gets to the idea of business goals too, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm curious. So we, before well, let's, we let's, shift over, go ahead. Let's break that down though. Cause why that worked is because you set this goal, you set this concept of like, I want to be a better runner. And then I you want to see something. myself as a better runner. Yeah. And then you, you, you gave yourself some sort of metric that you could use throughout the year, which was the 1500 was miles. Distance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 1, and, miles. And, and you decided if I make 1500 miles, I will become a better runner because I will have to become a better runner to get 1500 miles. So you use that barometer throughout the year. Yeah. And you knew what you had to keep up with or whatever. And then you laid on accountability by telling people, you put it here on the podcast, you told me. I mean, and you have other runner friends and stuff. So that's a really good system. And I, I think a lot of New Year's resolutions lack that system. And that's why they fail. And, and here's the thing. I did not initially say 1,500 miles because that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. What I did was I said, what's reasonable each week for me mm -hmm. where I am right now? It's not something that I can't, that I have to get to. It's something I can consistently do and I'll do it each week. And for me, that was about 32 miles a week. Right. Whew. And then I said, okay, what if four or five weeks out of the year, I'm not going to be able to. Right. If, if I'm just way. out, and you know what, with, with a calf injury and a hamstring injury and then getting COVID over the summer, like these were things that just took me out of play. Mm. And so, so I, I think this is really interesting and I think that this will transition well. It's not about what you can accomplish this year. It's about what can you do consistently every day or every week um, that shows you that you're still on the right path, right? And that was the thing, especially, and, and this gets to it as well. You know, so many people say what gets measured gets done. And, and in that case, it's true. Uh, yeah. uh, and you have the opportunity through different online tools to say, I'm on, I'm on, course or I'm 10 miles behind or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, like that's, you said when we were talking before the show, is that your goal for the year? And I was just like, no, yeah, right. <laughs> you know what? It, it was cool. And do you just make, do you just increase that? No, that's not what I want. No, no, but, no, no. But the bigger thing to your point was I, I quit drinking because I didn't want to ruin a run. I didn't want to ruin a run because I didn't want to ruin the week. I didn't want to ruin the week because I didn't want to miss my monthly and I didn't want to miss my annual. So it all, it all built up. And I think any, Perfect. this could transition to anything. Um, the, the other part of it is when you start to look at it that way, you sometimes find that certain goals you thought you had to meet, you don't. And for example, I thought I had to be a certain weight. I was really trying hard to be around 170 pounds because in my mind, right, 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 right. I had this concept that that was my perfect running weight. And there was an article in Runner's World uh, that just came out that the, the 
cover is The Lie of the Perfect Running Weight. Hmm. And it's this guy who's about 400 pounds um, running. And he's got, he, he is the founder of the Slow as Fuck Running Club. <laughs> um, it's got 8,000 members in it. Whew. And boy. they're runners, man. It's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. But, but to me, what I found was, and this was about three months ago, I quit tracking calories and I quit all that shit. And I ended up gaining about six pounds and actually being a better runner. Like I had a false metric in my mind that things right. were coordinated, but because I had a higher level goal, it like totally changed it. So mm. I want to, I want to shift over though, because I, I want to, yeah. I, as much as I have personally reflected on what that was, um, I do have a new personal goal for this year. Ooh. I'm going to let go of grudges that I've had for a long time. And this wow. is a tough one, um, but it, it actually starts within my uh, extended family with my brother and sister. Um, mm. And the first thing I did was I had conversations with them about why I had been so angry with them. Right. Mm. So I think it, for me, the reason that was it, and, and it's such a shift from some sort of a physical accomplishment or whatever is because when I looked at myself more as a holistic person, the things that hold me back are things I can't let go of. Hmm. Right. And that all transitioned through a lot of journaling and stuff into realizing that I'm holding on to some of this angst from the past. And in order to move forward, you've got to let go of that stuff. And uh, honestly, I'm not hurting anybody but me hmm. when I'm holding on to these grudges. So it was funny at, it, <laughs> at midnight, I didn't know this was going to happen, but we've been shooting off fireworks and stuff. And um, all of a sudden, Kaylee, my oldest said, what's everybody's New Year's resolution? Yeah, <laughs> It's going to be to let go of grudges. Which is just kind of funny, but luckily everybody got distracted before it got to me. So <laughs> that was that. Was good. But do funny. you? So you don't have anything? I mean, you, no. there's nothing. Not really. Not that you'd call a New Year's resolution. Okay. Well, let's let's take a look at what it means when you're actually a, an entrepreneur, and when you're, a, a, I'm going to say web shop, digital agency leader, if you're a founder, if you're running a team, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. um, we transition this this idea into our roles as well in our companies. I mean, did you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's every year we're like, okay, we finished the year. This is what we yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to look at this next year. It's, it's a lot stronger, I think, than it is uh, for people individually when you look at it as an organization. It is, and it's a team-based thing. And, and I do think that it is, uh, when you use it in your business, it is fiscally related, I think, yeah. most of the time, because you're billing years over December 31st, right? Like, for most businesses. For most people. Yeah, unless you're on that yeah. weird July track or whatever. But like you still have tax in the US, you still have tax filings on the same dates. Yeah. You know, bills are due on the same time of the year. What so yeah, it is I think it relates around your income and how you record all that. So I spent a few hours and I went online and just looked at business, small business, entrepreneur, blah, 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 New Year's resolutions. Like yeah. and and literally after a few hours called this list down to 34 <laughs> and we're not going to go through all of them. Um, Give me the highlights. But, but there are the highlights. Whoop. Okay. First Hamilton reference of 2022 <laughs> highlights. <laughs> um, you know, I, I kind of want to go through them really just in, in a way that makes sense for, a lot of what we just talked about on the personal side, right? It's um, it's not so much an individual metric as it is mm. an overarching theme. Okay. And and you can measure these for sure, but I think the one that matters most that everything else falls out of is delegate and mean it. Mm. You know, it's we're all just like I was saying with with the idea of, of a certain metric, like I need to be lighter to be a better runner or whatever. It's like, no, let go of that. Right. That mm. doesn't matter. Or the grudges, right. It's like, why am I holding on to that? It was a long time ago and it's preventing me from being who I can be now. And I think with the delegate more and mean it, it's, 
you know what? First of all, everybody's struggling to keep their teams together, mm. give people more responsibility so that they can see themselves as a bigger player so that they can feel like they're a part of what's going on. I right. think that's kind of huge. But at the same time, you're not all that. You don't have to do every single thing. And, and if you are all that, then why would you be spending all your time doing the small stuff, mm. right? And, and so, for example, for me, it's like I really have to let go of some of the, the micro scheduling. I have to let go of being a part of every single thing that happens at the community. I mean, today for the first time, we're going to have roll calls coming back, which are based on what you do at your company, and they're being run by ambassadors, right? I'm there if they need me for these first few, but the yeah. – the plan is they're going to run them. They are the host. They are going to make right. them their own. And, you know, that's really hard for me. <laughs> because yeah. oh, because yeah. I associate myself so much with everything that happens. But right. the Bureau is much bigger than me. And that, I think, is my – for me personally, I think that's kind of my business thing is – I got to delegate and mean it. I can't just put on a happy face and say, no, no, you do that. And then be running around behind the scenes, like looking right. at everything. Right. Remind everybody. everybody. Yeah. I think that's, Follow. that's probably the biggest one. Um, there's another one that I think is kind of related to it. Um, and that's drop what's not working and move on. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's very important. Yeah, I mean, there are things that we might have the urge to delegate, but then we just realize, actually, that shit doesn't matter at all. <laughs> I saw a really great quote on like, it was spray painted on a wall in uh, somewhere up in North Carolina in the mountains. It said, uh, "Don't stick to a mistake you made. You took a lot of time to make." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right? "Ow!" <laughs> I mean, how much that? We have to think about that for a second. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we have these things that we like, we've just done in our business. Like we've always done it that way, but, and we never stopped to think like, well, why the hell are we doing that? And it's costing money or it's like useless. Like what, why are you still doing it? You know? Yeah. Figure that shit out. You know, we used to, um, this, this was a thing when I was at the advertising agency. And then I, I know a lot of shops that do this too. Yeah. And, and even with the advent of, you know, agile and all the things over the past five or 10 years, people would have a, a one all hands meeting, right? Yeah. And those uh, meetings were almost always on Monday morning, like in the uh, advertising game, they were almost always on Monday morning. And I remember uh, one time uh, somebody at Husk, the agency I was at said, why do we do these the morning when we're the least knowledgeable uh, about what's going on? Things have changed. We're trying to figure out. We sit here with 26 people yeah. and we say, I'm not sure, but I think like 10,000 times. It's like a if we could just do these, game. If we could just do these on Tuesday mornings, we could have Mondays to figure out where things are, be prepared, come in, nail it, get out. And then Oof. we suddenly had AM Tuesday, which was agency meeting Tuesday. And That's you good. know what? Somebody said it. I think, I think what you just brought up is great. There's so many times we're just doing things because we always did it. And that's part of letting go as well. Like it's part of growth, we're... man. It's a growth. Yeah. Growing as a person as a company. What and do we speaking of the, the great doing resignation. This? Speaking of the great resignation, if you uh have Monday morning meetings, you should probably stop that shit to stop people <laughs> from leaving your company. Because I would yeah. quit. I would quit. And I, I mean, actually it's... did. Because this company I was working with wanted to have an 8 a.m. Monday meeting. What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get here at 8 a.m. on Monday. This is not happening. I'm trying. <laughs> sorry. So I, I got one more here. I know we're coming up on time. Um, but I think delegate more and mean it That's is solid. huge. I think you know, drop what's not working. <laughs> Move on. Right? Because both of those really give us more time as entrepreneurs. Mm. And I think the third one that mattered the most for me is fall back in love with what you do. You oh. know, it's like, now, now obviously that is a more of a, a, a statement and a goal, but it's like, we all did this for a reason. We all mm -hmm. wanted 
to mm-hmm. create something. And we spent the yeah. last two years trying to protect something that's not real anymore. Like if, if there's something that we always did, and I, I, I believe this, like I'm sure there are exceptions, but we always were adapting. We always mm-hmm. were making the changes that were necessary because especially in digital, things were changing so fast and we had to decide which waves to catch and which ones to pass on. Mm-hmm. We had to decide what things we had always done that we were going to keep doing because they were big breadwinners and what things we were just going to start doing because we thought they were cool. And I think we've lost that. We think it's cool kind of part yeah. of being Absolutely. an entrepreneur. And we've got, we've just doubled down on the, I can't get the old thing to work anymore. Right. And so I would say that, that third one for me, and I don't think you need to have a bunch of them, but it's just like, these are all really related. It's like, remember why you did this? Yeah. You know, who were you then? And and I hear a lot of people like I'm 54. How old are you, Gene? You're in your early forties. 47. 47. There you go. And so I think a lot of us go, I'm too tired or couldn't do it again. Shut up. Yeah. You know what? It's like live. Yeah. Then give it up. Do it. Yeah. Or or get the hell out and let somebody else do it. I mean, that's right. We have such an amazing opportunity. I've said this before again and again, we're in a better opportunity to succeed right now than we've ever been. I get that we can't get all the people on the team we want. I get that we can't expand out how we want, but that's all based on preconceived notions of how things were. Mm -hmm. Now now we need to make them how they are. And you know what? I'm going to throw a fourth one in there. Charge more. (laughs) Yeah. God damn it. Charge more. Right? It's like if we can focus on this handful of things, then we can turn the corner on a new industry. We can turn the corner on becoming something that we weren't, that we can love again, instead of something that we were, and we absolutely hate that we can't make it work. And to me, if if we're going to do one thing, as we throw out the puppy calendar and pull in the (laughs) kitty calendar, you know, it's that it's like, let go, let other people pick up that slack, stop doing the shit that doesn't work. And fall back in love with whatever we can do right now that sustains us both as individuals, as spiritual mm-hmm. beings, and it. financially. I love it. I didn't see that coming, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, if you I excuse me, I got to go do 50 crunches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gene, man, I just want to thank time. you. Yeah, yeah man. Thank you for this. I, I, you know, we haven't had a show in a couple of weeks and I forget how grounding this is for me. And you know, this, I say, whenever I get on stage, it, it's a, it's a gut check for me because I don't want to lie to people. I don't want to say things aren't what they are. Um, I don't want to make it sound better than it is. And this to me is like that. It's for everybody that's listening. Just know we're, we're bringing the truth as we see it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that it's your truth, <laughs> but I hope, I hope yeah, on some level it does. <laughs> and I just want to say this show is for me, you know, it's like, I, I get that it helps the Bureau. I get that it helps the people listening, but man, it helps me so much. And Gene, I just want to thank you for that. You, uh, you bring a lot of clarity to my week every week. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you do as well. I look forward to this every week, man. Yeah. Well, and here's, and here's the 52, that, uh, 50 more this, this year. <laughs> that's right because we're going to be a couple of weeks where we're just like <laughs> like when that axe falls on your head it's uh, going to be uh, one of those weeks uh, <laughs> we'll have to get it well, everybody listening happy new year welcome back um we'll keep bringing you more episodes hopefully with less focus on how awesome i am well but maybe not hard to do <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody all right. we'll see you next week <laughs>